Welcome to the desert, my lord. This tutorial will teach you the techniques you need to know in order to get your castle up and running. The first task is to find a suitable place to build. To scroll around the map, push the mouse pointer to the edge of the screen. The first thing you need to do in Crusader is find a suitable place to site your castle. Left click on the manor house building, then find a flat, empty piece of ground on the map. Move your mouse over the main screen until your keep appears. Once you're happy with the position, left click to place your keep. Wood has automatically been transferred from your starting goods into your stockpile. The wood is now available for you to use in your construction. In addition to the manor house and the stockpile, you should see a campfire. Move the mouse pointer over it. The halo that appears is your population growth indicator. The more popular you are, the faster it will fill and the quicker your population will grow. Every time the indicator makes one full rotation, a peasant will arrive and stand by the campfire until work becomes available. If the halo turns red, you are unpopular. The halo will then be showing you how quickly people will leave your castle. On the top left of the screen, you can see that there is plenty of food among your starting goods. But to use it, you will need to build a granary. Left click on the granary building and move your mouse pointer in the area near the keep. When the granary building appears, left click to place it. The food in your starting goods will be transferred to the granary. Your peasants now have an ample supply of food to eat. Right click to exit the build mode, then left click on the granary you just built to bring up the granary panel. That's not a valid option at this time. You can't do that at this point in the tutorial. Good. This panel lets you see your food details and allows you to make changes to your rationing. On the right of this panel, there are five plates with varying amounts of food on them. These symbolize the different ration settings from no rations up to double rations. At the moment, rations are set to the default of full rations. Left click on the plate with the most food on it to set your rations to double. Due to your generous rationing, you are now gaining a big bonus to your popularity each month and the popularity symbol has changed to a smiling face. The downside to this is that you are consuming food at twice the rate you were before. You can view the rate of consumption by watching the speed of the bar in the granary, or you simply see the units of food disappear from your granary on the map. Next right click to leave the granary and left click on your manor house to bring up the keep panel. This panel lets you view your tax details and allows you to change your tax rate. You can't do that at this point in the tutorial. You can set your taxes to anything from a generous bribe all the way up to a downright cruel tax. Taxes are currently set to the default of no taxes, so you're not gaining or losing any money. Left click on the right arrow until taxes are set to mean. You will now have a little gold coming into your treasury each month, but you are suffering a big hit to your popularity due to your mean tax rate. Good. The scribe shows your popularity, gold and population size. His expression reflects your popularity. The report the reports panel is now visible. Left click on the popularity button. Here you see the effects of your actions on castle popularity for the coming month. 
Making changes to your tax rate and rationing are the two main ways of manipulating your popularity. With popularity over 50, people will come to the castle. Below 50, they will start to leave. Your tax rate and rations level will now be set to their original starting levels. Now right-click again to leave the report. Now you have a grasp of how to place buildings and manage your taxes, food and popularity, let's take a look at how to expand your settlement further. Running along the bottom left of the screen are six shields. These are the building category buttons, which change the type of buildings displayed on the building selection scroll above them. Move your mouse pointer over these shields. The shields will highlight. And above the building selection scroll, you will see a description of the button. Left-click on the industry building category, Hammer. Click on the woodcutter's hut in the building selection scroll and build four woodcutter's huts close to the trees. Finally, right-click to stop building. That's not a valid option at this time. You can't do that at this good. Now you see that four of the peasants around your campfire have turned into woodcutters and are working cutting down trees. Wood will soon begin to arrive in your stockpile. Now you need to start increasing your food stocks. Left click on your granary again. The amount of food you have left is shown in absolute units and also monthly supply. Right click to exit the granary screen. Left click on the farm building category, Apple. Now place four hunters posts and the remaining peasants will become hunters. Good. When the hunters have prepared their meat, they will place it in your granary. Aim to have at least enough food coming in to cover demand. The bottom set of numbers on your scribes report show your current population followed by your available housing. It is currently 8 out of 8, which means the housing inside your manor house is at full capacity. Click on the town buildings category, house, and build a hovel. Your available housing will increase and your population will begin growing again. Each hovel you build will hold up to eight people. Your settlement is growing, but so of course are the number of mouths to feed. Now you will learn a few additional interface controls that are useful when playing the game. To rotate the map, move the mouse pointer into the middle of the screen, then press and hold the right mouse button. The camera interface icons will appear. Move the mouse pointer upwards onto the rotate icon. To zoom out, press the right button again and move the mouse pointer to the right over the zoom icon and release the button. To zoom back in, repeat the process. To go into flatten mode, press and hold the right button and move the mouse pointer to the left over the flatten screen icon and release. To go back to normal mode, repeat the process. You can also go into and out of the flatten mode by pressing the spacebar. Press and hold the right mouse button again to bring up the camera interface. This time, move the mouse pointer down onto the peak icon. 
This will pull down tall objects such as mountains and walls and allow you to see behind them. Release the button to allow the landscape to spring back up. Congratulations! You have completed the tutorial. You are now ready to start the first mission of the Crusader campaign. Would you like to continue playing this map?